in this model of partial equilibrium analysis of a competitive market, uh, it's derived, it's, it's, it's uh, uh, created by uh, Alfred Marshall in early 19th century. And uh, therefore, we will be talking about Marshallian demands. All right, so we know from the consumer's utility maximization problem how to drive a Marshallian demand curve, right? So let's suppose there are two goods, but we can easily extend the logic to more than two good Ks, obviously. So uh, let's focus on one particular good, say good X. So good X demands depends on the price of good X, price of good Y, and income of that consumer. Obviously, if there are, you know, multiple goods, it depends on the price of good one, price of good two, price of all the other goods, and then the income. Well, intrinsically, not explicitly maybe, but intrinsically, the demand also depends on the preferences or the utility function of the consumer, right? So we do not put the utility function there, but we know that implicitly it depends on the utility function because we know how we derive or how the demand is actually derived. Well, so this is an individual demand curve or individual demand. Well, well, in a market environment, we have not just one consumer, one individual, but many individual or buyer. Well, what do we do in this case? Well, we look at the aggregate, the sum of all the demands. How do we do that? They're very simple. Let's index each consumer uh, as I from one to N. So we have N many consumers. And we know how to drive the consumer, uh, each consumer's demand, given his or her utility function, given his or her income. So I, uh, superscript I, means the individual I's uh, uh, income level. And the PX and PY are the price of the goods available in this market. So we know how to drive all individuals' demand curve. And what we basically do, just sum them up, all right? By this, we basically get the aggregate market or market demand uh, or total quantity demanded for good X in this market. As simple as this. Obviously, this aggregate demand or the market demand for good X also depends on the price of good X, price of good Y, and the sort of the total income. Well, here, obviously, and one assumption is that each individual is facing the same price, uh, same prices. All right, meaning a negotiation is, for example, not allowed, or we basically ignore that sort of interaction. So everybody, each consumer, is facing exactly the same price levels. Uh, consumer's income may, may, may differ, obviously. So the market demand depends on the aggregate income, but how it is distributed is also important, right? Maybe some individual's preferences are uh, are different than the others, and so the income effect could be different in some consumers than others, and therefore the market uh, demand may behave differently depending on how the total income is distributed among the consumers. All right, so what we do uh, for our analysis, for our partial equilibrium analysis of the competitive market, well, we drive or we draw demand curve. Uh, probably you remember from the uh, principles or intermediate micro courses that the demand curves are straight lines downward sloping. Well, we previously talked about how to drive the demand curve, uh, individual demand curve. So what we do basically, we just uh, extend this idea to the market demand curve. Well, the idea is the following. We keep uh, the price of a good Y and uh, sort of the income distribution fix. And then uh, for any PX level, we determine how the market uh, demand is going to change. And that is going to give us a downward sloping demand curve if each, for, for each individual this good is a superior good, meaning higher prices means lower demand. So therefore, the demand curve is not necessarily going to be a downward sloping straight line. Uh, straight line is just for simplification. Uh, but it's going to be a downward sloping curve. Um, all right, so X on the, uh, uh, you know, well, uh, sometimes we put, well, here I put the price on the uh, X axis. It, you know, technically doesn't matter, but um, let's sort of uh, be sure about the uh, uh, standard protocol and let's follow this standard protocol. So we basically put the quantity demand on the horizontal axis 
and the price of the good on the vertical axis. All right, so prices are always on the vertical axis and the quantity demands are always on the horizontal axis. So be careful about that. Uh, well, this is important because later when we talk about things like elasticity, for example, or consumer surplus, producer surplus, uh, so if you basically switch uh, Px with X, or the coordinates, well, well then you know, the, uh, the description of these, these, these terms are not going to be the same. So uh, be, be careful. Well, because we are uh, making a partial equilibrium analysis, that means we are focusing only on one market. And in this, by the way, when I say uh, one market, I actually mean a market where you know, a good X is traded. So we basically focus on just one good. Although there might be a bunch of other goods, like good Y, for example, or a you know, bunch of other goods available uh, or, or that are traded in this market, we're going to ignore them. We're going to keep their prices uh, uh, fixed. And then we're going to focus on how the uh, uh, demand curve for particular good X uh, is, is changing or sort of uh, interacting with other things. So for that reason, in our earlier courses, probably you follow this notation, and so I will also follow the same notation. Instead of calling the price of good X as, or instead of calling the price of a good X, good Y, I'm going to just say good. All right, the, the, the good, the product that is traded between the buyers and the sellers. And so instead of calling the price as PX, I'm going to call it P. And instead of sort of calling the quantity demand as X, I'm, just, I'm going to call it QD. So that basically means the quantity demanded. All right, so it's a simpler notation. 